you would think we're in just some nondescript archway in the old city. We are. This is kind of an entranceway to a Christian area in the old city. There is like the Jewish quarter, Muslim quarter, a lot of Christians over here. But this is very interesting, and I'll tell you, it's not for the reason you think. Listen carefully. You're noticing the lion and the lamb? Let's focus on that lion for a moment. So all over Israel, there are statues of lions that were donated by Christians. In Jerusalem, in the park. So they donate a lion. Now, when the Christians donate a lion, the people don't understand what the lion represents. They think it's a nice lion, or maybe it's a lion of Judah. It's not. Well, as I sculpted it, Roy, I actually asked God, you know, help me make it look like Jesus. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what I prayed. I said, Lord, let the Jews and everybody look into the eyes of this metal sculpture that's just a piece of metal of, a, of an animal that he happened to create, but let them see their Messiah wow. looking into that face. And so I really constantly the whole time prayed that and that that would come across. And as you saw from the video, those were Orthodox Jews. Yes. And they were seeing yes. the presence of God in that line sculpture. It's Revelation chapter 5, where you have both the lion, very prominent, that's Revelation 5 verse 5, with the lamb. The lion and the lamb are all over Revelation. The book with the seven seals that's opened by the lion, what is that? That's Jesus. But the strange thing is that here in this archway, you have a few references to the lion, but this is like a Christian area. So here they can be honest. Look up there. See the lion? See the crown? That's the king. What does that mean? It's Jesus the king. It's Jesus in his second coming. Take a look here. Moving around. Our lion again. These are all names of Jesus. Everything. Lord of Lord, King of Kings. His name will be Jesus on the top. But look at the one in white. Four lines down. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Beneath it, it's hard to see it. It doesn't say Genesis 49. It says Revelation 5.5. 5. Now, why is it that the statues of the lion in Jerusalem don't make any reference to the book of Revelation. Make no reference to the 27 book of the Christian Bible. Because they knew the Jews won't want it. Let's head back this way for a moment. This is mind-blowing. There's a lamb, lion. What does that mean? This is very powerful Joannian Christology. The notion that Jesus was the Lamb of God is very prominent in the book of John. It's absent from the Synoptic Gospels. But in the book of John, uniquely in the book of John, Jesus is the Lamb, is the Passover Lamb. John 1, 29, John 1, 36, behold the Lamb of God. Now we have this idea, this idea in Paul's letters, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, for example. But not Matthew, Mark, or Luke. This is so prominent in the Christian Bible. Why? The reason that is, is John actually changed the date of Jesus' crucifixion to the 14th day of the first month so that Jesus was crucified on the day that the Passover lamb was killed in preparation for the first day of Passover. That's why the last supper in the, supper in the book of John, John 13, there's no Eucharist there. If you want the Eucharist in the book of John, it's John 6, 54 and 55. So Jesus in Christian theology came first as a lamb, John 1, 29, John 1, 36, and he's going to make his second coming as the lion, as the king. He came first to suffer and to die and to rise on the third day. Now this idea is in the Christian Bible. This is going to blow your mind away completely. In the Christian Bible, the authors claim that this notion is found in the Hebrew Bible. It isn't. It's completely made up. 
It's a phantom passage. Luke 24, verse 44, 45, 46. States, this is the end of the book of Luke, that in the Hebrew Bible, it says that the Messiah is supposed to die, be in the tomb for three days, and rise on the third day. According to Tanakh, it's not there. It's made up. Paul does the same thing. Notice the similarity. Probably the most famous chapter in all of Paul's letters, 1 Corinthians 15. Focus on 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4, that Jesus died, was in the tomb for three days, and rose on the third, according to the scripture. There is no scripture like that. It doesn't exist. It's made up completely. But what the line is conveying is this is the second coming of Christ. And how strange it is, how troubling this should be, that Christian groups, evangelical Christian groups, are donating these very elaborate statues of lions, but where they're here in Jewish towns like Jerusalem, no mention of Revelation 5. If you go to the United States, they've got lions all over the place. If you saw the parades going up and down, they got lions all over the place. You see missionaries on the streets, they got lions all over the place. They don't say Revelations chapter 5. Why the scam? Why the dishonesty in evangelism? Why put statues of a Christian passage in a Jewish neighborhood but leave out the verse? Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 18, whether in pretense or in truth the gospel is preached. No, better, a more important verse. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. He says the following. He says, to the Jew, I become as a Jew, that I may gain the Jews. To those who are not under the law, meaning non-Jews, I become as someone who is not under the law. I can become all things to all men that I may gain some. That's what's going on here, this blurring of the distinctions. That's what this really is. People, you know, I think Jewish people watch this and go, isn't there like a lion-lamb thing, like the lamb and the lion will lie together? No, no. It's the wolf and the lamb lying together. You see, there's no wolf here. The lion eats straw. See Isaiah 11, see Isaiah 65, last verse. So what they're doing is they're juxtaposing the lamb with the lion First coming of Jesus, second coming of Jesus. By the way, why do you need a second coming? Why does Christianity need a second coming? Was well, nothing happened in the first coming. Every religion where the messianic hope fails, you've got to come up with the unfalsifiable excuse that there's a second coming, a notion thoroughly unfounded in the Hebrew Bible. How do you play with Scripture? How do you alter it? What are you doing donating this to parks in Jerusalem, to Jewish communities in Israel, and why in the United States will you have these statues of lions? Does it say Revelation 5 very clearly? And somehow when they're donated to Jewish organizations or Jewish um, communities, Jewish communities in Israel, there's no mention of the book of Revelation. Is there a problem? You bet there is. It's speaking two different languages, two different packages, two different communities. What's the answer? Look, if education is not the answer to this problem, then everything I'm doing is wrong. But we're doing the right thing. We'll bring light into a place of darkness. That light will continue to grow. Arise and shine for your light has come. Nations will go by your light. Read Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 3. Shalom. If you enjoy these programs, please like and subscribe. Adon Olah, Asher Malach, Beterem Kol, Yetzir Nivra, Let Nasa, Bechef Tzokol, אזי מלך, אזי מלך, שמו נקרא, ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו, ימלוך נועד.